Well, hello, it is me, The Last Hodler. And as you probably know, I am one of the lead blockchain developers at a software company called Online Blockchain from the UK. And I just wanted to talk to you today and kind of give you a little bit of a guided tour through the Bitcoin source code and show you some kind of key interesting things that you probably want to know if you're um, a developer that's looking to fork your own cryptocurrency from Bitcoin, but also if you're just looking at altcoins and looking for something to mine or looking for something to invest in, okay? so. On the screen here, I have the official GitHub repository for Bitcoin. And inside of here is, I guess you could say, all of the code that runs the Bitcoin uh, protocol, the Bitcoin network, validates blocks, and all that kind of thing. All right, so the first thing I'd like to look at is a file called chainparams.cpp. And what chainparams.cpp is, is I guess the initial parameters are all defined in there for the blockchain, all right? So when somebody comes in and they fork Bitcoin and they make their own altcoin, um, they're going to make quite a few changes to this file um, to kind of customize their blockchain and make it into um, the kind of blockchain that they need, all right? So this file um, is in the official um, GitHub repository for Bitcoin in the source folder. Um, and the source folder is where all the code is, basically. Um, everything that validates blocks, everything that will connect you to other nodes, just everything, right? So the file that we're going to look at today is called chainparams.cpp. All right, so open that. Now, I just want to st uh, start by talking about the three different networks that the Bitcoin network has. I guess you could call them sub-networks. Um, I'll explain to you exactly um, what they're all for and how they work. All right, so the first one is called the main network. All right, and what the main network is, as you probably guess, it's it's the main network. It's where um, the bitcoins that are actually worth money are all mined um, and traded and uh, for goods and services and all of that kind of thing. It's the main network, the actual bitcoin network. And there are two other ones, right? There's the test network, right? That's where this, this is where it starts here. And then we also have regression test. Now they're quite similar, but they do have some uh, major differences. Now what the, te the test network is for is to test new um, additions and changes to the Bitcoin protocol without having to actually release them on the main network and potentially break things or potentially um, um, open up a vulnerability. What you want to do first is test it on the test net, um, where I guess there are no consequences for screwing things up, right? Test net Bitcoins aren't worth anything. If you mine on the test net, um, the coins you get aren't worth anything. So um, every time um, the, uh, so there's a change to the protocol, um, it is tested first on the te net, test net. And then um, after that, once you, um, the Bitcoin developers have confirmed, I guess, that everything is working correctly and as expected, then they will migrate that code into the main network and then it will become part of the actual main real Bitcoin network. All right, so that's the test network. Everything is the same. Pretty much everything, all of the parameters, the way the blocks are mined, everything is the same. Um, but if you want to make a, a, an addition or a change to the Bitcoin protocol, you should test it on the testnet first. So that's the point of the testnet. But there's also another, I guess it's a testnet too, but it's called regression test. And the difference between uh, regression test and the test network is that blocks are mined pretty much instantaneously on the regression test. So like imagine if you were going to make some kind of test for the Bitcoin network and you needed to mine a thousand blocks to make sure that it worked, right? You wouldn't be able to do that on the test net or on the main net um, because it would take too long to mine, right? No one person can mine a thousand blocks on the Bitcoin network um, in a practical amount of time, right? So that's why we have regression test. Um, you can um, mine a whole bunch of blocks really quickly and see if, uh, and you can use that for testing purposes, I guess. So. So those are the three uh, main networks uh, that are part of the Bitcoin network, and that's what they're all for. Now, I'd, I'd really like to look at something else, a little bit more specific, right into the code. Um, two things, okay? So the first thing we're going to be looking at is NPOW target time span, all right? And then I'm going to talk to you about NPOW target spacing. Now, what the target time span is, is how often the Bitcoin network adjusts its mining difficulty to compensate for the change in hash rate. Okay, so as you can see here, it's 14 times 24 times 60 times 60 and a comment that says two weeks. Now what the Bitcoin network does when it's changing its network um, mining difficulty is it doesn't um, look at time like we would look at time. It doesn't look at its watch and go, oh, it's been two weeks, it's time to readjust the mining difficulty. No, it doesn't do that. What it does is it waits for a certain number of blocks to have been mined. The, the number of blocks that would take two um, two weeks to mine in theory. And then once they're mined, it will look at all those blocks and say, how long did those blocks take to mine? Was it more than two weeks? Was it less than two weeks? And depending on how long it took, it readjusts the um, mining difficulty um, so that hopefully the next um, 
2016 blocks um, will be mined over two weeks. Okay, so it's 2016 blocks actually, not two weeks um, like we would think of two weeks, but 2016 blocks um, with a 10 minute block time, which is what Bitcoin have um, has, should take two weeks to mine. So that's the way it looks at it. Okay, so 60 seconds times 60 minutes times 24 hours times 14, right? That's two weeks, 14 days, 24 hours, 60 minutes, 60 seconds, right? And so that brings me to the next part, um, which is the end power target spacing. So what that is, is how often um, should the network be trying to allow its miners to find a block, right? How um, should the mining difficulty be such that the network finds one block every NPOW target spacing. So you can see here that it's 60 times 10. So what is that? That's 10 minutes, right? Um, so a block, bit, the Bitcoin network is always trying to adjust its difficulty such that one block is found every 10 minutes. And since the mining, um, the hash rate of the mining, of the, everyone that's mining the Bitcoin network is constantly fluctuating, it's going up and down, you know, if, 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 um, if um, cryptocurrencies um, all of a sudden raising price and there's and there's a panic and everyone's buying, everyone starts mining, then the network um, hash rate will go up, right? So then the, the Bitcoin network will have to adjust its mining difficulty to compensate for that. And the same thing happens is when everybody leaves um, and everyone stops mining because, you know, maybe um, cryptocurrencies aren't um, um, as expensive as they were two weeks ago, you know, the price might have gone down. People leave and then the network has to readjust its mining difficulty again to compensate for that so that it can have 10 minute blocks, all right? So if, you, if you're if you a cryptocurrency developer, right, you're gonna to wanna to think about, okay, so how often do I want my blockchain to readjust its mining difficulty? Okay, there's a few considerations there because if you have a mining difficulty readjustment that's too slow, um, you can actually uh, be vulnerable to something called a hash attack. Okay, so let me explain exactly what that is. I'm a miner, okay, and all I care about is um, I want to make as much profit as possible from mining. So I want to mine coins when the difficulty is when the mining difficulty is low, and I can get lots of coins. But I don't want to mine the coins when the network difficulty is high, and I'm not going to get very many coins. All right. So I see that um, some particular altcoin, the mining difficulty is really low right now. So I'm going to jump in with all of my hash power, and I'm going to mine away and get a whole bunch of coins. And then the mining difficulty is going to go up to the point where I no longer can profit from mining this coin anymore. Right. So I'm going to leave and I'm not gonna mine that coin anymore, right? But I've left the, I've left the mining difficulty up here. So um, blocks aren't being mined as quickly, all right? It's, um, the, the network is slowing down. The, the, the blocks aren't being found in, in the period of time that they're supposed to be. So actually, the NPOW target time span, the, the retarget time, okay, it's actually becoming even longer because it's not looking at time like we look at time. It's looking at how many blocks and after a certain amount of blocks, it's gonna readjust. So the problem is, right, I'm driving up the mining difficulty and I'm slowing down the network because I leave when it's really high, all right? And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, um, after a certain amount of blocks have been mined, even though they're really slow, it's taken ages, the mining difficulty is gonna drop again. I'm gonna come back in and mine it back up again. So you can see how that can kind of screw up um, the the flow of a network. It can screw up how often the blocks are being found and all that kind of thing. So what a lot of altcoins do is they take this NPOW target time span of two weeks and they go, that is way too long, all right? Two weeks is way too long. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to, instead of have 2016 blocks, I'm just gonna readjust every five blocks, right? So then you have um, a, a network that can adjust its mining difficulty more often um, and that's kind of like a compensation against that hash attack. So that brings me to the next thing, okay? The NPOW target spacing. So that is how often the network is trying to produce blocks, all right? 10 times 60, that's 10 times 60 seconds, so 10 minutes. And as you'll see in a lot of altcoins, if you're looking um, at investing or maybe mining a new altcoin, you wanna come into this file if it's uh, a Bitcoin fork, because what they probably have done, if they're, let's say they're doing five minute blocks, they would've just come here and said, oh, it's 10 minute blocks, let's make that five minute blocks. I'm gonna take this 10 and I'm gonna make it a five. All right, so now when you see a new altcoin that you wanna mine, um, just come and have a look and see um, see what the, um, the block time is and what the difficulty retarget is. So you're now equipped um, to be able to see both of those things. But there is um, a trade-off between having a super um, quick block time, let's say a block time of one minute, versus Bitcoin's block time, which is 10 minutes, okay? So with a one minute block time, okay, you can have 10 times more transactions um, 
per minute than 10 minute block time, okay? Because you've got 10 times as many blocks. But there are um, negatives to, to that as well. For example, if you're having 10 times as many blocks come in, you're gonna need, as a full node, you're gonna need 10 times as much memory to store all of those blocks. So as a uh, cryptocurrency developer, as an altcoin forker, you're gonna have to think to yourself, well, do I want loads of transactions to be able to, um, do I want to have uh, uh, the facility for lots of transactions to come through, but also um, have that disadvantage of making all of the people who are running full nodes need all that much more memory. Um, so that's definitely something to consider. When when ten years ago, when Bitcoin was invented, um, the hard the, the general hard drive space that you would have um, was a lot less. All right, so we have a lot more. Um, we have um, we have what we need. I guess we have what we need um, to have um, more. I guess you could say we have the memory um, to accommodate to accommodate one minute blocks now. So in my opinion, it's much better to have um, a shorter block time than Bitcoin. And a lot of um, altcoins have done just that. There are a lot of altcoins out there that have one minute block time, two minute block time, 30 second block time. But what you've got to think about as um, an altcoin developer or as someone who's going to invest or mine into one of these blockchains is, is this blockchain going to be sustainable uh, with that block time? Okay, so that has been the um, target time span and the target spacing. Um, and as always, uh, remember to hodl as long as possible. Uh, subscribe and comment if you want me to talk about anything else.